Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Castello, Board Certified Family Practice, and today we're going to talk about abdominal pain and differential diagnosis and what we think about when someone comes in complaining of abdominal pain. So first thing, let's go ahead and draw a picture of the belly. And I like to do a six-sided picture like that with your upper body, ribs, legs down below. And we need to remember that right and left are reversed. So your right side is always the side of the patient, and left side is the side of the patient. We'll put the belly button right there. We like to divide the belly into different quadrants. So right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant, right lower quadrant, and left lower quadrant. This is called the suprapubic region, and this is called the epigastric region. And in the middle is periumbilical. That's no man's land because there's no major organs that are in the middle. And when someone comes in, especially a kid, and he points to his belly button, uh, very difficult to decide what the cause of the pain is. Uh, so I like to call that no man's land. So we'll start with right upper quadrant, probably one of the more common places to have belly pain. And the things that we have hanging out in the right upper quadrant is your gallbladder sits up there right underneath the ribs. Uh, your liver is up. It's more above the ribs. Uh, under the ribs. The liver doesn't usually cause pain, so when someone has right upper quadrant abdominal pain, one of the things that we think about is the uh, gallbladder. Uh, your esophagus comes down here, and your stomach is like that, about the size of your fist, and then the first part of your intestine or your duodenum is there, so epigastric is usually your stomach. Uh, the first, the right upper quadrant can be gallbladder, but also can be the uh, first part of the intestine or a duodenal ulcer will hang out in that region as well. Your pancreas sits across the upper abdomen and is kind of right in this region, so right upper quadrant, epigastric or left upper quadrant can all be pancreatitis type of symptoms, um, so that's a little bit more varied. Now where it gets a little bit confusing is when well, we add your appendix. So appendix is down here in the right lower quadrant. Um, so usually pretty common or pretty typical to have right lower quadrant pain with appendicitis. Where it gets a little confusing is as your colon starts on the right side. So literally where your appendix is is the start of your colon. That's called the ascending colon. You've got the transverse colon that comes across the right and then the epigastric region. And then you have the descending colon, which hits the left upper quadrant and left lower quadrant. And then the sigmoid or S-shaped colon, which is in the left lower quadrant region. So there's a lot of overlap. Uh, the female organs are very low in the pelvis, so your uterus is down in the suprapubic region. Your ovaries sit very low as well. The urinary bladder sits in this region as well, so pelvic pain or suprapubic pain um, could be bladder-related, could be um, ovarian or female hormone-related, and also could be that sigmoid colon. So there definitely is a lot of overlap, and this is where the interesting part and in the uh, clinical part of medicine comes is learning the uh, intricacies of history. So we'll start with gallbladder symptoms. So gallbladder is typically right upper quadrant abdominal pain, sometimes radiates to the back or to the left, or excuse me, the right shoulder blade. It's what's called colicky type of a pain, so intermittent waves of pain. You're sitting there fine one minute, and then you get this surge of pain that kind of builds up and then goes away. That's typical of gallbladder. Some nausea can be associated with it. It's worse after a fatty meal and better after rest. Your gallbladder sits there at the base of the liver and it makes bile or stores bile made by your liver and when you have a fatty meal the gallbladder contracts and it squeezes the bile into the first part of the intestine so if you have a blockage or stone in your gallbladder that'll cause pain in the right upper abdomen after a fatty meal. Um, Stomach ulcer can be in the epigastric region, the V of your ribs. It can be in the first part of your um, right upper quadrant and your duodenum as well. Sometimes better with food, sometimes worse with food. Sometimes it goes to the back as well. Sometimes nausea or acid reflux associated with an ulcer. So definitely food related, just like your gallbladder. Pancreatitis, your pancreas sits across the upper abdomen. So anywhere in the upper abdomen can be pancreatitis. Um, oftentimes um, it's described as a burrowing or boring or stabbing pain that radiates to the mid-back. So if you drew a line from the front to the back, uh, that might be pancreatitis. 
Uh, your appendix or appendicitis is going to be down in your right lower quadrant, oftentimes associated with fever, nausea, and vomiting. The interesting thing is in a kid, the kid will oftentimes point to his belly button as the first symptom of, uh, of appendicitis, and we need to be careful that he's not telling me that his appendix is bothering him just a day early. So sometimes starts in the belly button, but typically ends up in the right lower quadrant. Uh, colon symptoms. We talked about diverticulitis before. You can get diverticulitis anywhere in the colon, anywhere where you have these little bubbles. You can get diverticulitis, but classically diverticulitis is going to be left lower quadrant pain where we have most of our diverticula uh, less commonly elsewhere in the belly, but sometimes we think somebody has an appendicitis, send them for CAT scan, and it turns out they got diverticulitis in their right lower quadrant or we think that they're having an ulcer or gallbladder attack and it turns out to be diverticulitis, uh, but typically in the left lower quadrant um, in someone in their 40s and 50s or someone who has a known history of diverticulosis, uh, we would consider diverticulitis. Uh, the spleen hangs up here, up under the ribs on the left upper quadrant. Very rarely does the spleen cause pains, but after a trauma, you fell or a skiing accident or car accident, if you came in with left upper quadrant abdominal pain, we might think about uh, spleen injury or splenic injury as a cause. Um, suprapubic or pain in the top of the pelvic region associated with urinary symptoms like frequency or burning or urgency to go to the bathroom or an incomplete urination symptom um, can be related to a bladder infection. Uh, ovarian cysts or pelvic issues like pelvic infections can be related to uh, your menstrual cycle. So if you have pain a couple of weeks after your period, that's oftentimes an ovarian cyst. I didn't mention your kidneys, but your kidneys hang out about here in the mid-belly. Um, typically don't cause abdominal pain, would typically cause flank or back pain. Now the exception to that would be is your, if you had a kidney stone, oftentimes as the kidney stone is up higher, you'll get back pain. As the kidney stone migrates its way down towards the pelvis, you'll sometimes get this wraparound pain into the groin. So if you had back pain two days ago and now you've got lower abdominal pain and it's colicky or comes in waves, uh, I might consider a kidney stone as a cause of the pain. So when you go to the doctor, they're going to ask questions. First off is, where is your pain? You need to give them a very specific location for your pain, and then they're going to ask you a bunch of questions about what makes it better, what makes it worse, um, how did it start, does it radiate, is there fever or vomiting or changes in your bowels or urinary problems associated with it, and that's going to help them narrow it down. I'll give you an interesting case I had where I had somebody who had right upper quadrant pain and I thought they had an acute gallbladder attack. They had pain and vomiting and fever and the surgeon actually took them to the operating room getting ready to take their gallbladder out and their appendix Actually, they had a floppy colon, and their appendix was flopped up into the right upper abdomen, and they actually had an acute appendicitis, and the doctor didn't know this, or the surgeon didn't know this, until they took him to the operating room, and luckily they looked around and they saw uh, that the appendix was up there. As far as diagnostic tests for abdominal pain, there's a bunch of different tests we can do. Um, it really depends on what we think is the most common cause or what your symptoms is. So if I thought you had uh, an ulcer, I would more likely put you on stomach acid medicine before I sent you for an ultrasound. Or if I thought you had a gallbladder attack, I may send you for an ultrasound before I put you on stomach acid medicine. Or if I thought you had diverticulitis, I may put you on antibiotics and do a test later to figure out what it is. So um, it's not uncommon for us to have a presumptive diagnosis, do our initial treatment or initial workup and find out that wasn't the answer and then go on to round two or round three. Um, always if you have abdominal pain, if it's mild and you go home and the doctor says, I think you might have so-and-so and at two o'clock in the morning you get a fever or vomiting or worse pain, all bets are off. Go to the emergency room. Our first impression is not always the correct diagnosis. So um, if things are changing or different or um, don't seem the same as they were when you went to the doctor originally, then either call them or go to the emergency room for reevaluation. Uh, Dr. Costello, thanks.